This is June from Desk Jams. If you're new here, I'm the owner of the stationery shop Desk Jams. And um, today I'm just gonna do a casual video where I show you my 2023 planner setup. And these are just uh, some of the many planners and journals that I have. And if you're interested in some of the others, feel free to let me know in the comment section below and maybe I can do another video about them. Um, obviously, different people have different systems and what I'm going to show you today is one that works for me. So if you're someone like me, aka a professional hustler that is trying to balance work and life, this video might be very relatable. But even if you use a different system, you still might find something useful here. So uh, let's get started. Here's the four planners that I'm using for 2023. Um, two pocket-sized ring planners, one traveler's notebook regular size, and one small-sized notebook. I refer to them by size and type because I have a lot of letter planners, to be honest, and there's no way I can use all of them at once. So what I usually do is I change the planner cover every month. For example, this is an Ila Bizonte pocket planner in green leather. I might change it into my Giglio ostrich planner in pocket size later um, this month. So. Throughout the year, you might notice that I seem to be using a lot of different planners, but really, there are actually just a few at a time. I just rotate the content among them. It's worth mentioning that none of these planners requires me to write every day. Even though this fourth one is called a daily notebook, it's still not mandatory to write in it every day. So throughout the past year, I found out that I can no longer write on a daily basis because of the sheer amount of work. The shop has been growing steadily, as you might know, but it's still mostly a one-person shop. So between product procurement, taking product photos, social platform management, I just gave up on daily planning and any kind of decorations on my planners even. At some point, it just became clear to me that I just have no time for that. Um, however, I do have a list of things to do on a weekly basis and um, it turns out that it's actually quite useful for me to plan things on a weekly basis to get things done. Therefore, um, most of these planners are focused on either weekly or long-term planning. So before we dive into these planners, just know that these are actually my real planners. So I will use this black tape to hide some of my personal or sensitive information. And this tape is uh, from MT. The color is matte black, in case you're wondering. This is my main planner, which is a pocket size ring planner. Uh, currently, this is a pocket size planner from an uh, Italian brand called Il Bizonte in a beautiful green, almost emerald uh, letter on the outside. Uh, it also has gr um, gold button. Um, and also a gold ring, which I just simply adore. Uh, although it's an Italian brand, for some reason, um, there are just more planners from this brand from Japan. So I just got this directly from Japan. And um, so here I have a little insert, which is a passport size. Um, traveler's passport size insert, just a regular one with 64 pages, where I simply just um, record my favorite inks and inked fountain pens using my favorite stamps. So here is the one from Inks Companion from a brand called Beverly. Uh, and here is also the one from uh, Beverly. This is called a bell-shaped um, ink bottle yeah ink that's the one and these are the um, inked pen inked fountain pen record stamp from little lou which is really handy this is the um, bird standing on the ink bottle stamp also from inks companion and i also uh, record the date uh, when i ink the fountain pen so that i have something to refer back to 
uh, when I'm, you know, lost in all of the ink selections. So that's that. The main inserts are the monthly blocks and weekly inserts from a brand called Ashford. This is also a Japanese brand. I used them last year and I really like the clean designs um, of each block. And I also like the fact that the um, sections are quite roomy so that I can fill in a lot. I also love the side tabs that come with the inserts. These are really practical because they just allows me to quickly go to where I want to go to. So I decided to continue using them this year. The only downside of these two um, monthly and weekly inserts is that um, because the weekly spreads are meant to be continuous and there's no easy way to divide the weekly inserts by month, if you know what I mean. Um, my ideal inserts are ones where your monthly blocks your you know monthly blocks are followed by the weekly spreads of each month i think it's just easier that way but i guess nothing is perfect there are also some self-made inserts to track um, purchases and um, habits but they're not being used um, consistently here are monthly calendars where putting important events for an easy overview and in the weekly spreads, I put weekly to-dos and lists on the right and then distribute the tasks to the left, which is the day section. If I can't get this done on that day, then I'll just move it to another date. Sometimes as an uh, alternative, I instead implement weekly habit trackers on the right side. There are also some smaller sections at the end like inboxes, reading and wish lists. In the inbox section, I just dump future to-dos there. These are things that don't have a specific due date, but need to be done eventually. For the reading section, I just put random notes or thoughts for whenever I'm reading a book. Favorites is a section where, as you expect, I keep my current favorite items. It can be my favorite books, movies, paintings, or stationaries even. It's good to have this um, favorites list on a portable planner because it's easy to refer back to it and add to the list whenever you want. And finally, we have the wish list section, which is probably the most important part of this planner. So throughout the years, I would put a number of things that I want to do or want to get onto this list. Sometimes it's just about watching a new show or sometimes it's about getting certain things on Black Friday or maybe it's about wanting to travel somewhere. No matter what it is, it always gives me a sense of direction when I read the list, even though some are not so easy to achieve. Having this list also brings me a sense of accomplishment when I actually achieve any of these goals. These are the planners for my shop work. I divided the entries into two planners. So this traveler's notebook regular planner is for short-term planning, including weekly schedules and projects. This pocket-sized ring planner is for more long-term projects and video planning. Let's talk about this short-term planner first. In this planner, there are two inserts. First is the weekly insert from traveler's notebook. Similar to what I do in the personal planner, I usually list all the weekly tasks on the right hand side and then distribute them to the day sections on the left. I used um, this Hobonichi Weeks last year because I found that um, this like weekly um, format is really easy to use um, for task planning and tracking. But the only problem is that the spaces for the hobo weeks is a bit small for me and that's why i decided to switch um, to these t uh, t and inserts this year because they're much roomier aside from the weekly planning i also have a blank insert in this planner to write down or just do to about any short-term projects which usually will be for a couple of months 
I also have a paper folder that helps organize any samples or documents that I'm working on. But for more long-term projects and recurring items like vendor information, year-long projects, or company information, I would use this pocket-sized planner, which is currently a purple, pinkish pocket-sized planner from a Japanese brand called Brelio. And so far, you probably noticed I really like to use pocket-sized planners. This is because I really like the portability they offer, so that even if I'm on a trip, I can still bring them with me. So apparently there's a lot of top secret stuff in this long-term project planner, so I can't really show much. But from the side tabs, you can probably already get an idea of all the information I keep there. In this um, project section, I also put down video ideas for Reels or TikTok, and sometimes for YouTube. I find it easier than writing on a notebook because once I'm finished with a video, I can just take the pages out easily. In addition, ring planners give me the flexibility to reorganize everything whenever necessary. I'll never need to worry about running out of pages or putting the info in the wrong place. And finally, this is the daily planner. I only use this one on busy days to list my daily tasks and to keep me focused on finishing them on time. Last year, I used the Robon Year of the Tiger Pocket Planner. And this year, I'm still using Robon, but I'll be using this slim version. One of the benefits of Robon planners and notebooks is that the pages are very friendly to fountain pens and each page is perforated, so you can tear a page off and repurpose it uh, to somewhere else. For example, sometimes I reattach them to my journal for my memory keeping. So that's all of my planners for this year. It's not a lot, but they're just about the right amount for me. To be honest, sometimes I really envy people that can use five or six planners at the same time. Unfortunately for me, that's no longer an option. My planners might also not be the most fashionable ones out there, but they're certainly functional for me, and that's what matters the most. So um, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.